Hey guys, Big Rat 3! 3! Send back at it. Uh, first of all, um, about the uh, whole WWE sheep thing. Look, I'm not gonna think about it anymore. I said maybe I am, maybe I am. You guys decide. I'm. I. I, I don't want to think about it anymore. You guys decide, and I'll just go with the majority or not. Okay? Because if you guys really think that I am, then I am. It's a, as simple as that. Because I. I don't know what I think anymore. There you go. All right. Now let's go to. Because I'm just saying this because I got a lot of messages about the whole sheep thing. So I'm saying, oh, don't be too hard on yourself. Or, or some guy said, yeah, maybe you are a little bit of a sheep. So, honestly, I, I just don't want, I don't want to care. I do sadly, but I don't want to. So I'm just going to try to forget about the whole thing and let you guys decide, okay? Let me go to R-O-H. Baby. I thought this show was better than last week. I don't know if it was better than the first show. Just because, as you all know, Kenny King, I just saw the match right now. Again, it was pr still pretty good. And uh, the ti obviously the main event with Tyler Black and Jimmy Jacobs. Um, I thought this car was better than last week's. So I'll give it that. And the opening. Actually, the... Nah, I wouldn't say it's better than last week's opener. But it is better than week one's opener. Um, Eric Stevens defeats... SJK or Sterling James Keenan in a pretty good match. Uh, Stevens actually does the, the Dr. Bomb better than Jack Swagger, which is kind of weird because Jack Swagger is bigger and stronger. But he does it better, and it looks a lot cooler when uh, Stevens does it. It's a good match. Dark City Fight Club defeats Cheech and Cloudy. Now, I'm not going to personally say this because I don't have any right because I'm not a true Ring of Honor fan. I'm just warning you guys because I know exactly what True Slayer and what ROH Styles 23 says. They said two weeks ago that Rhett Titus shouldn't have been competitive with Brent Albright. It should have just been a squash. And last week, Alex Payne shouldn't have been competitive with Claudio Castagnoli. It should have been a squash. And I guarantee, I guarantee you watch. It's going to happen. They're going to say the same thing about this. They're going to say the Dark City Fight Club. It shouldn't have even been competitive with Cheech and Cloudy. And the Dark City Fight Club should have just completely destroyed him. And Cheech and Cloudy should have gotten in zero offense. And that would have worked a lot better. I'm not. I don't have a right to say it since I'm not. I haven't been as big as a fan as. If I said I'm not a true ROH fan, I'm sorry because I'm trying to become a true ROH fan. What I meant to say was I'm not as big as a fan as those guys are. I haven't been watching it as long as they have, so I don't. I don't really give myself the right to say it. But I guarantee they're gonna say it. That's Dark City Fight Club should have destroyed Chicha Claudi in 30 seconds, and Chicha Claudi should have gotten zero offense. Chris Hero defeats the Necro Butcher with the. Paddy elbow. See, Lex Luger, take a tip. This guy actually had a weapon in his elbow. Not, you know, just a regular elbow. That was be that was like Luger specials. Special, yeah. Magic. Elbow. That's almost as good as Barry, Winch Barry Windham, whose special was the running punch. Because I have the Ric Flair DVD, the Ultimate Ric Flair collection, which is better than the Definitive collection by like 10. And in the Ultimate Collection, it showed Ric Flair versus Barry Windham in the one-hour Iron Man match, which was a very good match. But, like, you see Barry Windham going for a special, and I'm like, oh my god, what's he going to do? He's running towards Ric Flair. Punch to the face. At least Chris Hero has a damn pad to make it look believable. And he knocks out Necro Butcher with that padded elbow. And uh, they kept bragging how Necro Butcher had a big part in The Wrestler. Now, I saw The Wrestler... Well, his part was very good, and it was, I guess, more than a minor part. I wouldn't call it a big part. These guys are treating it as like if he was like Mickey Rourke's best friend. No, he had that match with that one match with Mickey Rourke. That I think that was from CCW. That was a very good match. I actually liked the match. I never thought that I would like a wrestling match from going into the movies. I liked the match, but and it was, I guess, more than a minor part. I've heard a lot of people say it's it's possibly one of Dramatically, they say the best scene in the movie is when Roar cuts up his finger because that, sim that symbolizes how his insanity got the best of him. But they say the most action-packed part of the movie, they say it was his scene with the Necro Butcher, so I will give him that. I'm not trying to ruin the Necro Butcher or anything. I'm just saying, for him to say he had a major part of the wrestler, I think that's a little off. If you've seen the wrestler, you'll know what I'm talking about. Brian Danielson defeats Austin Aries in a match that I was pretty disappointed with because the match was only 10 minutes. Why... Does ROH insist on ending their shows at 10.52? Can someone explain it to me? 
They don't go. I mean, not ten fifty two. Uh, eight fifty two. They don't go the full hour, and that bothers me. Why don't they go the full hour? They have a good eight to ten minutes that they can put into their matches, but they just don't use it. They just leave it there. I remember the first show. It ended at eight fifty. And I was all upset. I'm like, well, you have 10 more minutes of wrestling you could have used in each of your four matches. That's... That's, uh... That's, uh, 2.5 minutes a match. Or if you want, you could have added it on the main event, which would have been 10 minutes of time about Jimmy Jacobs. That could have worked. So why, why... Can someone please tell me that? Why is ROH not using their last 10 minutes? But this match, I will. This match was good. I'm just saying I was disappointed because it was short. It was only like ten minutes long, and I seen some pretty good Brian Daniels matches from these three DVDs. So that seeing a ten minute long match was pretty upsetting. But I will give out this match some credit. This was the first match, the last three ta- tapings, the last three tapings, the to the fans to have the fans bang their heads in the bars, going R O H. This is the first time they've ever done that in the last three tapings that I have seen. So I will give Daniels and Aries that credit. Guys, I promise no more videos. No more videos until WrestleMania. Okay? I'll, I'm gonna I'm planning on playing tomorrow. I don't know what to do. But it is WrestleMania. And I want to get in the Legends mindset. I want to do this today with the Hall of Fame. But I didn't have time. Because uh, I had some friends come over and a bunch of other stuff. So I, I couldn't do it. But tomorrow, I do plan on doing it, I guess, after the Hall of Fame. I plan on watching this DVD, The Legends of Wrestling with Fred Sergeant Slaughter. Hopefully, this DVD, the one that I really want to see, the main... I think I would have bought the whole thing just for this DVD. It's called Heat Seekers. It's the round table where they discuss about all the people in wrestling who were assholes behind the scenes. It has Lex Luger, Vince Russo, Buff Bagwell. Not assholes, like, you know, assholes looking for the spotlight... Bad people, people who are seeking heat. It has Buff Bagwell, Vince Russo, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Lex Luger. I don't know which one of these. You guys, you old time wrestling fans, I don't know much about NWA tag teams, so I know who these both these teams are, but I don't know who's the bad guy here. In the Chai Town Rumble, I know that's the pay per view where Steve will be Flair for the title. Who was a heat seeker? Midnight Express or Oriental Midnight Express? Or original Midnight Express. Original Midnight Express or Midnight Express. You guys tell me that. It had Lex Luger again. And the Freebirds. I don't know if they were heat seekers. And the best part about this is this round table has, wait for it, Mick Foley and, oh my god, is it possible? Eric Bischoff. That's right. Eric Bischoff. And I heard that Mick Foley does ask Eric Bischoff, why did you tell Tony Schiavone to say, put those asses in the seats? So I'm really looking forward to seeing those two, and I'm really hoping to play the Legends of WrestleMania video game. I I got it. I spent a lot of my uh, my uh, Christmas money from last year that I didn't touch. I spent a lot of it on this on this game, and I've played it once, and uh, not not including the demo. So I really want to play more of that game tomorrow. I want to get more into it. I want to get to the story modes and stuff. And guys, I'm done. I will see you at WrestleMania. I found a new way to upload videos that's much much faster. So, you can expect my WrestleMania review to be, like, almost immediately after the pay-per-view. Okay, guys, I'm Big Rat. Three, ten, three. Ow. Sheep says, peace. By the way, I will not be on Skype during Mania. Just want to point that out. A lot of people ask me. No, I always watch, like I said, I always watch WrestleMania in another room with my dad and my brothers. It's been a tradition. So, no, I will not be on Skype. I will... And for, uh, I can't believe I already said the piece. For Cage Collision, I'm going to be on vacation because I have spring break. And on lockdown, I can't promise that I'll be home on time to watch lockdown. But I'll try. Cage Collision, I'll be on spring break. I will still try to watch the pay-per-view. I'll go on Skype, most likely. Lockdown, I can't promise that I'll be home on time. But we'll just have to wait and see. So now I have to do this again. I'm Big Rat. Three, ten. The sheep says out and peace.